just east of Niagara Falls in northwest New York State, an area with the deceptively serene name of Love Canal turned out to be one of America's most notorious toxic waste horror stories. An inadequate cover on a chemical company's dump site allowed a deadly brew of toxins to leak into a suburban neighborhood. A public health scare erupted. Over 900... Before it goes over the falls and carrying it north through a canal which would wind up at this escarpment or cliff and pour down and provide the power that's necessary to generate electricity. Or Alternating current made it unnecessary to develop. For the next several years, Love's unfinished canal served as a summer swimming hole for nearby residents. Then in 1942, Hooker Chemical Company acquired the canal. They uh, ended up using the property as a uh, pretty much a 16-acre hole in the ground at that point. And they used it for uh, disposal of uh, industrial waste. By 1953, the canal was filled with over 20,000 tons of chemical wastes, including caustic solvents and pesticides. Hooker had no further use for the canal, and with no regulations in place to stop them at the time, they simply covered the dump site with a layer of clay and soil from the area. Soon grass grew and helped hide what festered just a few feet below. The chemical company offered to sell the no longer useful land for one dollar. The deed did contain a warning about the contents of the canal, but that did not stop the sale. Well, they didn't build the school directly on top of the canal. They built a playground there. And on the black top of the playground, there was like a percolation of a taffy-like watery substance coming out of uh, the ground into this playground. At around the same time, there continued to be increased development in the area. A series of homes went up around the canal. No that was found throughout the, the Love Canal community was generally a black belt. Um, it was wat more watery in some instances than in others. Those who had bought homes in the area hadn't been warned in their deeds of what was beneath the grassy field. For new residents like Lois Gibbs, something was clearly wrong. In 1977, her son began attending the 99th Street School. I just remember after living at Love Canal for a while, Michael got sick and he kept getting new diseases. He had asthma, liver problems, immune system problem, urinary tract disorder, which required two operations to correct. I mean, it was just like one thing after the other. And I could not figure out what was wrong with him. Around this time, a newspaper reporter wrote a story about the canal and what was buried in it. Now the residents had an explanation for the mysterious substances and illnesses. And Lois Gibbs decided something had to be done. First, she tried to have her child transferred out of the school. And they told her that uh, they wouldn't do it because there was no problem. There was no chemical problem there. And so she started uh, going up and down the street, talking to people, talking to neighbors, asking if they were interested in first the top of the canal. In the late 1970s, there were no conclusive answers about the health risks and long-term effects of exposure to toxic wastes. Nobody was really sure what wastes were in the canal, but deadly dioxin was identified. The Environmental Protection Agency had been formed just a few years earlier and had not dealt with a public crisis like this before. The residents' fear turned to frustration and anger. We want! We want! The Love Canal became the focus of the growing environmental movement and was soon national news. On August 7, 1978, then-President Jimmy Carter declared Love Canal a disaster area. Mentally pleasant um, around Love Canal. And then they put signs on the fence that said, hazardous area, dangerous, do not enter. Infrared pictures were taken from the air to track the spread of the contaminants. Gray or black in the photos revealed the presence of the chemical waste. After another two years of activism by Lois Gibbs and other residents, a second presidential declaration cleared the way for another 500 families to be relocated. Except for a few families who were... Continuing studies revealed the contents of the canal. There were over 400 chemicals found in the leachate from the Love Canal landfill, from lead and arsenic to lindane, 
variety of other pesticides to... And of course, the hazardous waste byproducts did find their way underground to a, uh, a nearby set of creeks, the Black and Burkholz Creeks, the creek sediment, and discovering that the same hazardous waste byproducts that were buried now have worked their way via water under the ground to the creek areas. Uh, one of the remedies were uh, to actually dredge the creek. Containment system put in place. The 99th Street School and 239 homes were demolished and placed on top of the canal and then covered with clay. And over the top of it, we placed this synthetic liner. And this synthetic liner went directly over the entire 40-acre area, OK? And then after we placed the synthetic liner, we then installed this plastic liner. This liner goes over the entire 40-acre area. So when it rains, all of the, uh, the precipitation will go through the ground and will actually hit the top of this liner, much like an umbrella. It will run off of it. The runoff is then collected in an underground barrier drain system. It's then pumped up to the facility at the top of the Love Canal, where it's treated by carbon filters. It is then discharged via storm sewer to the city of Niagara Falls' wastewater treatment plant, where it undergoes uh, uh, more filtration before clean water is discharged into the upper Niagara River. Anything that gets through is minimal. Obviously, we'll never consider it safe. This is the Earth. The Earth shifts. It's foolish to think that they can contain it. The crisis at Love Canal created greater awareness of America's growing problem with industrial wastes. It was also primarily responsible for the creation of a federal program. Since its inception in 1980, Superfund has spent more than $16 billion cleaning up over 2,000 hazardous waste sites around the United States, including the infamous Love Canal.